Thanks for clicking. My name is Mark Mitchell. I'm a mortgage broker here in London, Ontario. We just had the throne speech delivered by our Governor General, which sought to outline the priorities of the newly elected government of Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. If you'll remember, throughout the fall election, the Prime Minister outlined a number of promises and big changes coming to Canadian real estate, which we went over extensively on this channel. What I want to do today is go over the three mentions, the three priorities for Canadian real estate outlined in the throne speech, and also talk about briefly what was not mentioned, as I think that's almost even more important to see what Canadians are not getting, or what changes will not be made to, the, to Canada's real estate market than the small changes that were mentioned. So what we'll do today is go through the big three priorities for Canadian real estate, outlined by the Governor General, go through what was not mentioned, as I think that is quite big, and then we'll go over what to look for next, because it's not as though these promises are set in stone as of yet. Um, we will have more updates on this throne speech as they come out, as I think for sure the opposition leaders are going to have a lot to say about this throne speech. So make sure you click like and subscribe to get those updates. But for now, let's get into th the throne speech. If you remember during the campaign, the Prime Minister promised to make the first time home buyer incentive even more flexible. The first time home buyer incentive is, if you'll remember, is the shared equity program where the government matches your down payment, but then they also own some of your house. Programs like the first time home buyer's incentive, which provides support to make mortgages aff more affordable for younger Canadians. So if you put 5% down and they put 5% down, they own 5% of your house. And upon the time that you sell the house, you have to pay them back that 5%, including any gains that you made on that house. The government, for its part, had recognized that the program was wildly unpopular and promised to make it a little bit more flexible by introducing low interest to no interest deferred loans. So the government would essentially loan you that 5% down payment so they wouldn't have control over your house. They wouldn't have ownership over your house. The biggest problem, which I noted at the time, is it's not clear how the lenders are going to treat that loan. Are they going to treat it as an unsecured debt, as a borrowed down payment, where the the payments have to be included into 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 your debt ratios, or how are they going to overall treat this flexible first time home buyer incentive? But it does appear as though the government is continuing with that promise, as it was mentioned in the throne speech. We'll also help families buy their first home sooner with a more flexible first-time home buyers incentive. Second, the rent-to-own program was promised throughout throughout the campaign. And innovative pathways to home ownership, including rent-to-own models. This kind of leadership and innovative approach to housing is what this country needs. Where the government is going to engage in some sort of public-private partnership and provide over a billion dollars to create some sort of nationwide rent-to-own program. And this was included in the throne speech as one of the promises that they are going to be continuing on. A new rent-to-own program. Again, it's not clear how this program will be implemented, but clearly they are planning on including some sort of rent-to-own ideas as the government unfolds, as the as Parliament opens. So we're going to definitely have to have keep watch out for how they plan to structure this program and what the grants will look like. Finally, saving on closing costs. Prime Minister Trudeau promised throughout the campaign to double the first-time homebuyer tax credit from $5,000 to $10,000, which should help save the average family most of their closing costs when they go to buy their first home. And again, this was mentioned by the Governor General. And by reducing the closing costs for first-time buyers. And uh, clearly they're going to make this a priority. This is obviously one of the more easy um, promises to fulfill as it's just a matter of passing legislation. They don't need to create an entirely new program that needs to be implemented. So definitely look for this one to be coming to a theater near you. But now let's get on to what they didn't include. Numerous headlines were made by the Prime Minister when the Liberal Party came out with the Home Buyers Bill of Rights at the beginning of the campaign. The Home Buyers Bill of Rights, among other things, promised to end the process of blind bidding 
um, they were going to guarantee a six month mortgage deferral in the event of, of a job loss or significant life event. This one I th said back then was going to be a big problem as I didn't think the banks were going to take too kindly to it. And it was also going to require real estate agents to disclose if they were double ending a deal. That's if they were representing the seller and the buyer. And it was also, uh, among other things, there was quite a bit in the first in the Home Buyer's Bill of Rights, but among other things was going to force by law mortgage lenders and I would assume mortgage brokers to disclose the um, existence of the first time home buyer incentive, which a lot of lenders do not do as it is so extremely unpopular. But it appears as though all of these are off the table as they were not mentioned in the throne speech whatsoever. It's very strange, the blind the end to blind bidding received a lot of ink. Um, the mortgage deferrals didn't receive enough ink was my thought at the time. I don't, maybe nobody really thought it was serious, but from the looks of it, he it's not on the table anymore. So the first time home buyers bill of rights is out. However, with all of that said, it is not yet clear whether or not the opposition parties are going to support this government in this throne speech. Um, the opposition still needs to support it as the Prime Minister does have a minority government. So he either needs to get support from the Bloc, from the Conservative Party, or from the NDP, all of which I'm assuming are going to have some major problems with this throne speech. Maybe not for the reasons related to Canadian real estate, um, but all sorts of supports that were mentioned throughout the throne speech, not really the topic of this channel. But a lot of the issues that were mentioned, probably, I would assume, are not going to be up to the standards of um, a lot of the opposition parties. And um, at least the NDP has already said that they are not going to support this government willy-nilly, no matter what, this time, and they do expect their voices to be heard. So, as this throne speech comes more to fruition, and we have more of an idea what the opposition parties think, and as there's more commentary out about the Canadian real estate market, I would hope there'll be some mention of the first of the home buyers bill of rights just being thrown out, being totally forgotten about. Um, as there's more news out about those issues, we will have updates on this channel. Click like and subscribe to get those. And thanks so much for watching.